Hello and welcome back to the channel this week. I want to apologize for not being around last week. I've been out sick for about eight days. I've got a head cold or some kind of virus going on. Uh, not COVID, thank goodness. But anyway, let's get to this week's episode, which is all about sports photography and sports photography more specifically with the Fujifilm X-T5. Now, uh, I was on the edge about this. I really, I know that um, I did a video on the autofocus capabilities of this particular camera, but the one thing that really bothered me is, is that it doesn't have a vertical grip and balancing off some of these larger lenses was really kind of on my mind as to what I was gonna do. But uh, what I did was, is I, this winter, I decided that maybe I'll try it. I'll just, you know, maybe I'll do a little bit. I'll bring both, bring both cameras with me and shoot a little bit of hockey. Um, no basketball because the vertical grip, really, I shoot vertically with that basketball. So I really like that vertical grip, but I might be rethinking that. Anyway, shot some, some hockey and I was really amazed, you know, 15 frames per second and uh, the silent part of this new shutter, I just, I fell in love with it. I gotta tell you, I really did. Uh, so I started stepping out a little bit on my X-T3 and shooting some more sports. And uh, this spring, I ended up doing some girls lacrosse and I did it with my 100 to 400. Now, what I've been usually shooting with was, is this rig right here. This is the X-T3 with the vertical battery grip, and I usually shoot on a monopod because the monopod makes it a lot more steady with this particular ginormous lens here. And, I, you know, I just I said, oh, I gotta try that X-T5, and we're gonna go over some of the things that I did to experiment with the X-T5. And I gotta tell you, I love it. It's, uh, it's, it's way lighter than this rig here, and I, also started using my 70 to 300, so I'm carrying around a much lighter rig now. Um, I This lens here is, you gotta really learn how to work with it, to shoot sports with it. You gotta, you know, like for instance, I, I shot, I've been shooting tennis with it. Now tennis, <laughs> through the fence, it's out like this all the way. And if the light is not in a specific way shining on the fence, you'll see it in the, in, the, uh, in the lens, or I should say in the viewfinder. So you gotta make sure you <laughs> block it out a little bit or shoot in a way that you, know, you don't see the reflection from the uh, reflection of the light on the, the chain link fence. But um, I gotta say it really worked nice. And I've been experimenting with, like I said, different settings on the X-T5 and I've been pretty surprised. So let's go through some of these images that I took, uh, took some, some, uh, some hockey and I took some girls lacrosse with it. I took some tennis with it and I actually experimented with a little bit of softball and some baseball. So uh, I've been having fun with it and the results have been really pretty good. So I can't complain about that at all. So I'm gonna try to explain to you what I used for the, uh, the focus area and for the uh, AFC custom settings um, for each one of these. And I think you'll be surprised. And honestly, uh, I hate to say it, but I'm probably going to retire the X-T3 for shooting sports because, you know, the, the X-T5 really is much better at it. It's faster. And I've just upgraded the firmware in this camera and actually in the X-T3 too. So I'm gonna be experimenting even some more and see what I get for results. So the sports season is pretty much done for now. Uh, the kids will be graduating from high school soon and I won't be shooting sports again and probably until the fall. But this is gonna give you a real good idea of how to use the X-T5 for sports. So for hockey, the camera is set on continuous high at 15 frames per second and continuous focus. The AF mode is single point with the largest focus area and AFC custom setting number three. Now the critical part about shooting hockey is you're trying to keep that single point plastered on whoever you're focused on shooting on. And that really is the most difficult part about shooting with this particular uh, arrangement. 
And um, I also use back button focus, which seems to help me. Uh, although sometimes I'll let off on the, the back button when I shoot the frame and uh, we don't get everything in focus. But um, that's what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to really focus on getting that center point focused right in the middle on the most important person of the particular action shot, as you can see here with these. And actually, custom setting number three is actually pretty sticky and it will hold onto the person that you've been focused on and um, won't drift from player to player, which is pretty good. Now with tennis, I have been experimenting with the zone focus with face detect on and the largest focus area. And it's actually been working pretty well and custom setting number five actually has a tennis player on it and it's been working great. Now I've been experimenting here with tennis using the eye detection and the face detection inside the zone focus and it's actually worked pretty well and it's been picking up the eyes and moving pretty well so it's only when they turn a little bit sideways does it lose the eyes but actually it's been working pretty good and I can't complain about it it's actually been great um, you know it's it's the best part about that is if you have to get the net in the shot then it's gonna be picking up the face not the net so it's actually working pretty well that way as you can see with these shots Now these two lacrosse shots, I just shot one girls lacrosse game and the keepers were great. There was a lot of keepers and I got to say that it worked really well using the uh, AF mode zone focus with face detect on custom setting number three and it really worked out great. Um, I was very surprised. I was able to shoot nice and tight with that 100 to 400 and it really made a difference here. The big difference here is nice bright sunlight. So. You got a lot of contrast and the camera and the lens are able to work together and focus perfectly. With low light, it's not gonna be as good. Now for boys baseball, I used basically the same settings as I did for girls lacrosse. And I gotta say that uh, it worked out really well. I'm, I, the only problem is, is that me not having done a lot of sh shooting of uh, baseball, but you can see with this shot here, um, you know, with that 15 frames a second, you're able to pick up that ball going into the glove and this next shot here uh, at 15 frames a second, it's too bad the cars are in the background, but um, I got this kid, you know, lifting off the ground while he was throwing from third to first. I just cut off a little bit of the ball and I wish I'd started my sequence a little bit earlier. So I think you'll learn a little bit about how I've used this. Uh, I used eye, I used space detection, I used the zone focusing, just the larger one in the middle. And that actually worked pretty good. The problem is if you have other people that are running in front of you like this, then it's not gonna work so well. Uh, it actually worked pretty well for, for, um, for baseball and for softball, it actually worked pretty good. Um, and I used um, eye control, or I shouldn't not eye control, but I used um, face detection and eye detection for the tennis shots, and it actually worked pretty good. I was pretty surprised. So, thanks so much for watching this week. I really appreciate it. Um, it's uh it's been an interesting experience with this xt5 i really like it. so thanks for watching this video this week i had a great time talking with you about shooting sports with my xt5 and the xt3 here and if you wouldn't mind please like and subscribe and leave me a comment about how you shoot sports that would be great please check out capeanphototours.com because we've got some great tours around cape Ann going on and uh, looking for more people to sign up that would be awesome so remember, it's not what you photograph, it's how you photograph it, and we'll catch you next time.